Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you guys had a beautiful and wonderful day today. So today I want to talk a little bit about Christians who are spiritually constipated. Um, I know that's kind of a funny term, but, and I will explain what I mean by that. But there are so many Christians who are indeed spiritually constipated. They have a lot within them that God has placed there. They are full of the good works, but they aren't putting anything out. They are full of his riches and all of his magnificent works that were planned to be done and used. And so many Christians are full and constipated. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. We see here in Ephesians that we are his masterpiece. We were created with a plan and a purpose. And it is his will that we step out in faith and allow his good works to operate through us so that it might bring others to the knowledge of who he is. If every Christian is full of good works, prepared by the hands of the Father, why is it that not every Christian lets the floodgates open and allows the good works to flow from them like a well springing forth with flowing water? So many Christians want to sit on their hands and sit tight and remain stuck. They remain constipated with all of this potential and all that he desires and all that he has planned for you. So many people believe um, but let it end there. They don't care to do the things that God says in his word um, that are pleasing and honorable. They take obeying as a one-time event that takes place the minute that you believe, but refuse to allow it to continue on in your life. It is an everyday thing, and it is a lifelong thing in the life of the believer. So many people are willing participants but willing is not enough. There has to be a doing that goes along with it. A lot of people say, I am willing to do this, or I'm willing to do that, or I want to do this, or I want to do that. Stop saying, I am willing, and just do. They refuse to take it any further, and then in turn say, I'll just do nothing instead. Instead of doing nothing and being stuck and spiritually constipated, why not allow the Lord to release all that he had planned for you? Allow him to direct your path and allow him to open doors for you so that you can see his work and be joyful and blessed. Imagine if the ancient church um, would have been spiritually constipated themselves and refused to move. What if they refused to obey God and refused to let go and um, let his works be filled in them and flow through them? Let's take a look real quick at a few examples, <clears throat> and we will begin a new journey here uh, within the next few days, looking through the Bible at all of the situations where people obeyed, and even those who didn't, and what happened when they chose to disobey. That will be coming up shortly, and um, I'll be working on that as we go through like the week and stuff. <clears throat> we saw Adam and Eve. They, they obeyed God at first. But it wasn't until they chose to be disobedient to God that they were left with a lifetime of consequences. They had a moment of pleasure, but because of their disobedience, their consequences are still evident today. So I'm going to read something for you really quick. Okay, so here's some biblical examples of those who obeyed God um, they were not stuck. They were not spiritually constipated. God asked Noah to build a large boat. It had never rained before, okay? God asked Noah to do something. Could you imagine if Noah had not obeyed and not had, had not listened to God out of fear for what man or what others might say or afraid that he couldn't do it? It was uh, Noah was preserved by um, God and through the flood was able to continue on with the generations. The Lord called Abraham to leave his homeland and follow him. Not only did Abraham experience great material pro prosperity, but he also became known as the father of the great nation of Israel. Moses obeyed God by telling Pharaoh to free the Israelites. People were freed from slavery, and Moses became one of the most important spiritual leaders in history. Joshua followed the Lord's command in battle. 
David honored God by refusing to harm his anointed king Saul. As a result, David was made king at just the right time. Jehoshaphat obeyed the Lord when the Aramites attacked Judah. God promised that he would give his people the victory. Peter cast his net in the middle of the day as Jesus commanded. Consequently, he caught an enormous amount of fish because he obeyed what God was telling him to do. More importantly, he saw Christ for who he was and eventually became a leader in the church. God called Peter to follow Jesus. This meant accepting the theology of the people he had been persecuting, the first Christians. Because he chose to obey God and uh, took the gospel to the Gentiles, he became the most influential apostle. So through all of that, what types of blessings do we receive when we do obey the Lord? Because remember, obedience is not a one-time event that happens at the moment of belief. It is a lifetime event that we do daily. We should be daily obeying the Lord. And when we choose not to, and we all do, we all choose to disobey. And when we do, when we go out of our um, Father's will and we go into the flesh, that is when we disobey. And that's when consequences and hurts and pains and loss of jobs and loss of blessings and all of that come with it. God's gifts aren't always obvious. However, when you obey him, he may bless you with peace and joy and contentment. These internal qualities often result when we step out in faith and obey God. Spiritual growth. The next time God asks us to do something challenging, we have more faith to obey. Eternal blessings. When we stand before God on Judgment Day, will we be rewarded for our obedience? Or will we have crowns taken away because we were disobedient? Scripture says that we will be honored even for the small things. Suffering for blessing before blessings. Often the first effect of obedience is not blessing, but suffering. Sometimes what God requires of us will initially lead to pain and hurt. So when we experience difficulty, we shouldn't assume we've made a mistake or he has abandoned us. Let's look at two significant examples of suffering as a result of obedience. Moses followed God's commands to lead his people out of Egypt. Although Moses was afraid, he went to Pharaoh and demanded that God's people be set free. At first, things did not go well. Moses' miracles were easily mimicked by the Egyptian uh, magicians. Pharaoh refused to give in. Then once the people were set free, it wasn't long before he began to complain about life in the desert and Moses' leadership. Another time they made an idol in the form of a calf and began to worship it instead of the Lord. Despite these challenges, Moses kept on and he kept trust and faith in God. Moses is known as the most important leader in the Old Testament. Paul obeyed God by preaching the gospel. As a result, he suffered tremendous persecution, danger, and physical abuse. Part of his mistreatment included being falsely accused and thrown into jail because he considered it a, it a joy to suffer for the cause of Christ. Because he was imprisoned, he had time to write many important books including Romans, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians. That's why at the end of his life he could boldly claim, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the course, I have kept the faith in 2 Timothy 4.7. His obedience resulted in supernatural blessings. If you obey God, you can expect his blessings. Remember that his choice of blessing you may be different um, from person to person. Even when you undergo loss and pain, you can witness God's goodness. Perhaps he's using your suffering to draw you more closely to himself. Or he's removing those things in your life that keep you from being spiritually fruitful. The Father loves you, which means he'll do whatever it takes to remove those things that keep you from walking in the center of his will, no matter how painful it is. Often his blessings aren't the things that um, can be touched or seen. Sometimes the best way God enriches our lives is by revealing more of who he is in our lives. When we are a child of God, when we are truly 
um, walking in the spirit of the Lord, when we truly with our heart and our mind believe in Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross for us, we will have the desire to obey him. And when we don't obey him, we will be able to recognize that we have grieved him. We will be able to understand that we went out of his will. When God is um, putting red flags, let's say, in your path, he's shutting door door after door after door, and we go ahead and we push through those doors because it's something we want really bad or it's a decision that we want right now. We don't want to wait anymore. Um, anytime we go out of his will and do that type of thing, destruction and consequences will always come. I know from experience, um, you know, when I was with my um, ex-husband, he sent red flag after red flag after red flag after red flag, and I wanted what I wanted, and I pushed through that. I pushed through those warnings. I pushed through everything that he was trying, and he was lovingly trying to show me before it happened so that it would prevent me from being in the place that I was and I wanted what I wanted and I went through and I did it anyways and I am still to this day dealing with the consequences of that action um, so you know when we go ahead and we push through because it's something that we want our flesh desires this stuff um, and we don't trust in the Lord, it shows that we don't trust in him. It shows that we don't trust in his answer and that his answer is best for us, even if the answer is going to be no. And um, when we disobey him, and we disobey him by saying, well, you know, obeying him was a one-time event and I don't have to do it anymore. Or what are you obeying? We are obeying the Lord's words. We are obeying what he has asked us to do. We are obeying when he tells us to move, when he tells us to do something or not do something. We are called to do it or not to do it. And so when somebody is, like I said, spiritually constipated, they will have all of this stuff that he has put within us. He has put all of this stuff within us to delight his heart for us to give it out through the Holy Spirit, through the power that's within us, and we choose not to do that, what is that called? That's called disobedience. So I love you guys, and until next time, may you be richly blessed.